Good evening, I'm Paul Fraser and this is the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain Television. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Sakhir Palace the United Kingdom's Deputy Foreign Minister Alan Duncan. His Majesty praised the bilateral deep-rooted relations and the progress witnessed in various fields. He affirmed Bahrain's keenness to enhance these relations and strengthen the level of cooperation and coordination to benefit both countries. His Majesty highlighted the strong bilateral ties and cooperation under the wise leaderships of both countries, pointing out that Bahraini-British relations extend for more than 200 years. He affirmed the understanding and coordination between the two countries towards various regional and international issues. The UK's Deputy Foreign Minister expressed appreciation for meeting His Majesty the King, which reflects the deep-rooted ties between the two countries, wishing for these relations further progress and prosperity. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sahir Palace today the President of the Bahraini Authority for Culture and Antiquities, Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa. His Majesty the King affirmed Bahrain's pride in its culture, heritage and history that all stem from its Arab and Islamic identity. The President of the BACA briefed His Majesty the King on the fruitful results of the authority's project, Knowledge Transferring, which is the translation of four books amongst a series of 50 international books, in addition to hosting the Arab European Young Social Researchers Forum starting today until the 2nd of October. The audience also reviewed the authorities' preparations to celebrate Muharraq as the capital of Islamic culture 2018. These preparations include the Pearl Road project and rebuilding Bahrain's pavilion at Expo Milan 2015. His Majesty the King hailed the projects and activities of the BACA, noting that such projects highlight Bahrain's cultural, touristic and historical sites. He stressed the importance of documenting Bahrain's cultural heritage for citizens and residents as well as for future generations. His Majesty the King also wished the BACA success and prosperity. For her part, the President of the BACA expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty the King for the support he gives to culture and heritage in the Kingdom. She also commended the achievements of Bahrain, especially in the fields of culture and heritage, under the prosperous era of His Majesty the King. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, today received His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, at Gudabiya Palace. The Royal Highnesses reviewed a number of national issues and affirmed the government's unwavering efforts to adopt procedures that improve administrative organisation for the aim of serving the citizens and supporting the Kingdom's political and institutional work. They stressed the Kingdom's keenness on strengthening cooperation and coordination with various countries and organisations within a framework of mutual respect and non-interference in internal affairs, affirming that thanks to the wisdom and leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Kingdom has succeeded in protecting freedom and consolidating democracy and will continue to support all efforts to meet the aspirations of the citizens. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Gudabiya Palace members of the Representatives and Shura Councils in the presence of former Speaker of the Representatives Council, Khalifa Al Dahrani. His Royal Highness affirmed that Bahrain will continue its development plans under the wise directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to achieve progress and prosperity to the Kingdom in all fields. His Royal Highness discussed with the attendees the government's parliamentary cooperation and mechanisms to enhance development in order to serve the democratic and parliamentary march of the Kingdom. He stressed the need to continue the work in order to maintain national gains, praising the role of the legislative and executive authorities at both national and international levels in supporting the government's approach to achieve enhanced cooperation and coordination with different countries in order to achieve mutual interests and respect. The meeting included a discussion on topics regarding regional and international development. His Royal Highness also stressed the need to be more aware against all attempts and agendas aiming to threaten Arab countries and cause conflict, segregation and unrest. He went on to stress the importance of unity and enhance joint Arab action to achieve the strategic visions in order to overcome all challenges and maintain the security and stability of all Arab countries.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at Gudabia Palace today the Chief Executive Officer of Kuwait's oil tanker company, SAK, Sheikh Talal bin Khalid Al Ahmed Al Subah, who is currently visiting the kingdom to participate in the 10th Middle East Refining and Petrochemicals Conference and Exhibition. That's Petrotech 2016. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister stressed that despite the latest changes in the international economy following the drop in oil prices, GCC countries' development programs continue progressing due to the strong economic fundamentals these countries have established. His Royal Highness also commended the deep-rooted brotherly relations between Bahrain and Kuwait, emphasizing Bahrain's keenness to further develop these relations in all fields. His Royal Highness the Premier stressed the importance of developing cooperation between GCC countries in the oil and gas sectors and to utilize the latest technology. For his part, the Chief Executive Officer of Kuwait Oil Tanker Company expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his support in regard to Bahraini-Kuwaiti relations, highlighting the development of these relations in all fields. He commended His Royal Highness the Prime Minister's wise visions, especially in Arab, regional and international affairs. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, today received at Gudabia Palace the Chairman of the International Relations Committee of the United Kingdom's House of Lords, Lord David Howell, who is currently on a visit to Bahrain. His Royal Highness the Premier stressed that Bahraini-British cooperation is strong, affirming the Kingdom's support to common interests and any steps aimed at bolstering the strategic cooperation between the two friendly countries. He emphasised the depth of the long-standing ties of friendship between Bahrain and the UK, which stretch back over 200 years, expressing the keenness of the government of Bahrain on consolidating relations with the UK and developing the existing partnership between the two countries to achieve common interests. He highlighted the importance of activating exchange visits between officials in the two countries to discuss areas of bilateral cooperation and coordination and activation of the agreement signed between the two kingdoms. His Royal Highness reviewed with Lord Howell the economic challenges currently witnessed by the world, as well as regional and global developments, and their impacts on efforts to reinforce security and stability, stressing the need to step up international cooperation and coordination at all levels to agree on common formulas that ensure issues that pose a threat to the entire world are addressed. Lord David Howell voiced admiration for the Kingdom's progress in various fields of development, lauding the advanced level of Bahraini-British relations and the support provided by the government, led by His Royal Highness the Premier, to open up new horizons of bilateral cooperation. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, today chaired at Gudabia Palace the weekly cabinet meeting. In the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The cabinet commended the role of the Khalifa bin Salman Award for Sustainable Development as a global initiative, which reflects the vision of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and his keenness on highlighting and supporting leading examples in areas of development. They added that this award highlights Bahrain's keen interests in sustainable development, both nationally and globally. The Cabinet congratulated the former Tanzanian Minister of Lands, Housing and Human Settlement Developments, former Executive Director of the United Nations Human Settlements Programme and former Under Secretary General of the United Nations, Anna Tebayuka. On the occasion of Saudi Arabia's National Day, the Prime Minister commended its development under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, and Saudi Arabia's essential regional and international role in supporting Arab and Islamic causes. He wished the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia further progress and prosperity. The Prime Minister also lauded the preparations and services provided in this year's Hajj by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The Cabinet then went on to discuss the topics on its agenda and decided the following. Approval of three new laws by decree regarding protected cell companies, protections and amending Decree Law No. 14 for 1971 in the light of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa's recommendation. 
The Cabinet approved a plan suggested by the Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Supreme Council for Developing Education and Training to develop a unified national system which is expected to be completed by 2020. A draft agreement between the governments of Bahrain and China for the mutual exemption of short visa requirements for diplomatic passport holders was also agreed upon by the Cabinet. A draft resolution was approved to issue a financial chart for the National Health Regulatory Authority. The Cabinet reviewed the leading labour market indicators which were recorded in the second quarter of the year 2016. The Cabinet referred a draft law to the Council of Representatives regarding the allocation of a percentage of reclaimed land for housing projects. And finally, the Cabinet discussed three proposals by the Council of Representatives. The first regarding diplomatic and commercial relations with Iran. The second about maintaining mosques and houses of worship. And the third regarding the establishment of a mall in Hamid Town. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, affirmed that Bahrain will continue implementing the Sustainable Development Goals of the year 2030. Under national plans and programmes in order to achieve a brighter future for the Kingdom. Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed delivered a speech at the 71st session of the United Nations General Assembly in New York. He praised the active interaction between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Nations, pointing out the celebration of His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa's award for sustainable development has been granted to Mrs. Anna Kajumulu Tibayuka at the UN headquarters. He added the Kingdom of Bahrain's keenness to achieve sustainable development and to support all efforts aimed at achieving the same across the globe. He praised the role of Bahraini women and their contributions to the March of the Kingdom under the leadership of wife of His Majesty the King and chairperson of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa. He praised her efforts in strengthening the role of Bahraini women both locally and internationally. The Foreign Minister affirmed Bahrain's keenness to continue accomplishing its plans and goals in line with the Kingdom's economic vision of 2030, the government programme and the country programme document between Bahrain and the United Nations Development Programme in order to provide high living standards for Bahrainis and to achieve further progress and prosperity to the Kingdom in spite of all the political and economic Economic challenges. He stressed the importance of maintaining security and stability of the country and its people. He expressed deep concern over the decision of the US Congress to pass the Justice Against Sponsors of Terrorism Act, considering it contradictory to the Charter of the United Nations and the principles of international law. He said that it represents a threat to the country's stability and to all efforts aiming at combating terrorism. The Minister of Foreign Affairs warned from leaving the case of refugees unsolved, for that will lead to unease in the region and the whole world. He noted that the Syrian crisis is the biggest humanitarian tragedy the world has experienced in decades, with more than half of the Syrian population living as refugees and displaced people. He stressed that terrorist organizations used the crisis to strengthen their presence in the area and to threaten the stability of the region. The Minister of Foreign Affairs affirmed Bahrain's support to the Syrian cause, calling all countries with influence, especially the United States and Russia, to unite efforts in order to reach a political solution for the crisis. Regarding the Iraqi matter, the Minister affirmed that Bahrain urges on taking all the necessary measures to overcome all challenges that face rebuilding the state of Iraq and its institutions without any foreign pressure or interference. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also addressed the Palestinian cause, stressing that achieving stability for both communities of Palestine and Israel requires Israel to be serious in maintaining peace in the area. In regard to the current events experienced in Yemen, the Minister of Foreign Affairs affirmed that Bahrain's participation in the Arab coalition aiming to maintain the region's security and stability will continue until the legitimate government led by Yemeni President Abdurrabu Mansur Hadi fully controls the area. Regarding Libya, the Minister of Foreign Affairs stated that this brotherly Arab country requires everybody to unite amidst this rough phase to grant Libya safety, security and unity. As for the Moroccan desert affair, the minister affirmed that the kingdom calls to find a political solution on the base of the Moroccan initiative of autonomy and the related Security Council decisions so as to grant Moroccan unity and serve the region's security and stability. 
Regarding the Islamic State of Iran, Sheikh Khalid stated that the GCC countries and all Arab countries have tried their best to establish friendly relations with this neighborly country, but none of those attempts were responded to. He said that either the initiatives reach a dead end or ended up with Iran creating new problems and crises. He added that Iran's aggressive, racist and irresponsible approach continues to this present day, recently manifested in his false accusations against the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, a country known for its hospitality and constructive efforts, such as the yearly organization of the Hajj season. He also said that Iran continues its attempts to tamper with the Kingdom's security and stability through supporting extremist groups and militias such as Hezbollah and Iran's Revolutionary Guards. Iran also persists its colonization of the three islands of the United Arab Emirates and refuses any peaceful efforts to come up with solutions. Sheikh Khalid quoted the words of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa that the people of the kingdom represent the concepts of brotherhood, forgiveness and respect. He affirmed that the kingdom will continue to be a beacon of these noble traits under the wise leadership. ومن أكبر تطلعاتنا أن أن يأتي اليوم الذي نرى فيه الدولة الفلسطينية المستقبل. The International Labour Organization, that's the ILO's Women at Work Trends 2016, the report ranks the Kingdom of Bahrain at the top of the international indicator table for the rate of women's participation in the progress of the national economy, recording the world's fastest development rate for women's contributions to economic activities. The report also outlined women's representation in commercial chambers, highlighting that the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry elected its first female to the board in 2001, with four more members elected to the 18-member board in 2014. The number of companies that have a high percentage of women in executive positions rose from 12% in 2010 to 14% in 2014. Bahrain also tops the MENA countries for the rate of self-employed businesswomen with a percentage of 28%. The report also reviewed Bahrain's efforts in legal reform, which include granting equal social allowances to women. A woman is, uh, you know, is doing a great job, but with all uh, the empowerment that uh, we get from the government, from all the laws, uh, this really uh, paved the way for us. And uh, uh, a lot of uh, women here in Bahrain prove that they are really uh, very good in, in business. And sometimes they are even better than men in their uh, different fields. Bahrain women today, it's on the top and the first row uh, being in the economy uh, rose. That's only because uh, our High Supreme uh, Council, uh, Women High Supreme Council, support in all, all areas for uh, every each and single woman on this earth in Bahrain uh, land. Uh, we are enjoying uh, varieties of uh, uh, support in all fields and that gives us support and courage uh, to go ahead and uh, represent Bahrain in uh, uh, international fields. Bahraini women in business, uh, they reached to the uh, uh, board of uh, semi or government companies and also to the private companies where Bahrainis are board members in their family businesses or their own businesses. And the number of uh, uh, the percentage has been increased uh, since uh, 2010 uh, and every year is becoming higher. place at the Bahrain International Exhibition Center as part of a series of events to promote tourism ties between Bahrain and other countries. More in this report from Danielle Deporto. The Moroccan Bahraini Handicrafts Week, which opened at the Bahrain International Exhibition Center last night, was organized by the Bahrain Tourism and Exhibitions Authority in partnership with the Embassy of Morocco and Dar al Sana establishment. The event's patron, Bahrain's Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, Zayed Azayani, was in attendance, alongside Morocco's Visiting Minister of Handicraft, Social Economy and Solidarity, Fatima Maraoune, and the Moroccan Ambassador to Bahrain, Ahmed Rashid Khatabi. The Kingdom of Morocco has a long history in developing their handicrafts. Uh, we look forward in Bahrain to uh, sustain and maintain the handicrafts uh, culture uh, and to make sure that the artisans have the correct uh, training, the correct uh, uh, business path to promote their products. 
Today we, we had uh, 23 uh, artisans from Morocco and we matched them with another 21 from Bahrain. So this is an excellent job to train and to uh, learn from one another and, and, to, and, and, and to actually learn from uh, something Morocco is uh, uh, very known with is packaging their handicrafts. So it's an excellent way for our artisans to learn as well. There are around 2.5 million artisans making a living in Morocco. This event, which is the first of its kind, will give a boost to Bahrain's artisans and handicraft sector as a whole, to the benefit of the local economy as well as visitors to the kingdom. And bilateral cooperation in this field is only set to deepen. Today, His Excellency the Minister of Tourism uh, uh, signed uh, an MOU, uh, actually an action plan that would, uh, th there's a lot of initiatives. One of them is definitely to have an exhibition in Morocco, but there are other uh, initiatives such as training, such as marketing and promotion uh, and uh, bilateral exchange of experience. The Moroccan Bahraini Handicrafts Week will be open to the public until October 1st. Visitors can expect to find a range of unique Moroccan and Bahraini handicrafts for sale, workshops and live traditional musical performances. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporto.